Welcome to Marriage Mondays with the Kings. I'm Kenya. And I'm Shan. And, and we, we are, are the Kings. Kings. Happy Monday, you all. Welcome back to another show of Marriage Mondays with the Kings. We are so happy that you all are joining in for us with us for tonight's show. But you know, we cannot start without thanking our sponsor. So first up, we have Christian Humor for slash inspiration. This is a group that is designed to uplift, inspire, and bring humor to everyday life in a Christian way. If you are in the social media, please go and search them on Facebook at Christian Humor for slash inspiration. Now, if you are an organization or a business and you would like to be promoted during our broadcast or on KRGN 98.5 FM, we ask that you give a call at 254-213-1588. And so we want to do it this time, like we always do, is we want to open up with a word of prayer. So we ask if you are safely able to do so, if you are listening with you know your family or your honey, if you can grab their hands and join us. And even if not, if you could just join us for a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you saying thank you, dear God, for another day. Thank you for waking us up, Heavenly Father, something that we do not take for granted, as we know many cannot say the same, Heavenly Father. Thank you for keeping us and protecting us. Dear God, thank you for ordering our steps and guiding us, Heavenly Father. We ask and we lift everyone up to you that are going through right now in the name of Jesus, those who are going through medical issues in their lives, dear God, those who are suffering in silence and feel like they can't say anything, those who are going through in their marriages, Heavenly Father. We ask, dear God, that that husband and wife team would allow you to come in like only you can and fix the areas that needs to be fix. We lift up every family to you, dear God. We thank you for reconciliation, dear God. We thank you for moving in our lives like we just knew that you that only you could, Heavenly Father. Dear God, we lift up our show on tonight up to you, dear God. We ask that individuals who are listening do not feel slighted in any way or do not feel any guilt or shame, but are learning, dear God, from you as you speak through Kenya and I, less of us and more of you, dear God. We ask that the message fall on the ears that want to hear it, dear God, that it is answer prayer for those who have been praying to you fervently, dear God. We lift up leaders to you right now in the name of Jesus around the world, dear God, asking that these leaders will continue to come to you and just fall before your feet and just bow down and ask what they must do in God and your people, dear God. The selfishness, the division, the um, having the desire for all the eyes to be on them, dear God, we cast that down right now in the name of Jesus, dear God. We know that is not of you, Heavenly Father. We ask that you speak through these leaders, dear God, that you would give them the unction to change for your glory, dear God. And when all is said and done, that you would get the glory. Dear God, we lift up the radio station, Kara Jean, up to you, dear God. Dear God, those who are blessed enough and favored enough to speak on this station, we ask that a word be said that will be inspiring and uplifting to those who are hearing it, dear God. Dear God, we thank you for all that you have done in our life and all that you are going to continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And our foundational scripture for the show comes from Matthew, the 19th chapter in the sixth verse, and it reads, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together let no man separate. And so our motto for Marriage Mondays with the Kings is helping to build stronger marriages, which lead to stronger families and stronger communities. And our KRG and disclaimer, views expressed on this show are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or advertisers. This station holds no responsibility for the validity or accuracy of information on this show. And please keep in mind that although we are counseling professionals, the information shared on our show is for ministry educational purposes only. Also note that topics discussed are reflective of supporters who contact us desiring to have a deeper knowledge of these topics. No information is shared on our show based upon our counseling experiences. Topics are for the encouragement of marriages, families, and communities as God desire for us to minister. And as we move on in the show, we definitely want to introduce tonight's topic. And so without further ado, tonight we will be talking about we've lost the fire in our marriage. We've mm. lost the fire in our marriage. Okay, so we have lost the fire in our marriage. One of the things that we hear a lot, it seems like as the kings, and maybe not so much, but we do hear it, is those who have been married for a long time, maybe 10 years or more, would generally state that 
they feel like they've lost the fire in their marriage. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of individuals are not sharing as it used to be when you had the village, mm -hmm. when you had the iron sharpness, iron mentality. And so with that, if you are listening on tonight, what does that mean to you? We've lost the fire in our marriage. A lot of times when people, husband and wife team get to this time in their marriage, this rough patch, this valley, if you will, then it's like, well, I just want to call it quits. I don't want to be with him anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be with her anymore, whatever the case may be. So we hope and pray that that which is discussed on tonight is going to be a blessing to you all who have been praying. You know, even those who are single, hopefully and prayerfully, you can get nuggets out of this as well. And we also want to remind you, for those of you who are listening, if you want to watch Marriage Mondays with the Kings, please go to our YouTube channel and you can see us as we are doing the show. Of course. And, you know, when I think about individuals saying they lost the fire in, in the marriage, that tells me that at some point in time, the fire was there. Come on. And so really to just jump off in it knee deep or, you know, we can go chest deep if you're ready okay. to swim okay. is go. to say, if you knew what the fire looked like before, mm. then you may know what you need to do in order to get that fire back. Okay. I'm a true believer that individuals, first of all, need to understand how does one make fire? What are the elements that are needed to make fire? Mm -hmm. And the, the three basic elements are a heat source, mm -hmm. fuel, and you need oxygen okay. to start a physical fire. Okay. In your relationship, you have to be able to input whatever falls in those categories for heat, fuel, or oxygen for your fire that needs to be lit, rekindled, keep burning, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. All too often, we have to understand that when it comes to a fire going out, one of those things has been taken away. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself in your relationship, if you're saying that you've lost a fire, what has been taken away that had that fire burning in the first place? Mm -hmm. See, when you've got fire, if you put water on it, you're taking away the heat, potentially the fuel, and also maybe the oxygen. So there's no way you're going to get any heat or any fire that's there. Mm -hmm. So what have you taken out of your relationship that may have been fueling that fire? And what we find out sometimes, and I just want to hit this one real quick because this okay. is it. Okay. Most people say, well, if you have a fire, something catches on fire, one of the first things you want to do is take away the, the oxygen. You want to smother it. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself the question, what's been smothering your relationship? Mm -hmm. For a lot of individuals, it's other people. Mm, other people okay. coming inside and instead of giving you something that's going to fuel your fire they're giving you stuff that's going to stomp it out mm. it's going to take away the oxygen that's allowing it to breathe so that the fire gets hotter and hotter okay. what can that look like there could be somebody trying to move in on you to say hey we should be cheating with one another mm. infidelity mm. that'll put a flame out yeah. Are you spending too much time with your friends instead of your spouse? Mm. That will put the, the fire out because you're not feeding it. You're not giving it any fuel. You're feeding everybody else. Right. So the other part of it that we have to take a look at is sometimes we allow individuals to come in uh, to our relationships and they will have us pull away from what we put on our fire. So you were feeding your relationship before. You were spending time with your wife. You were buying her little gifts. You were doing all this stuff. Then you start listening to somebody. Man, they don't take all that to prove somebody love uh, that you love them. Mm. Well, for that person, that might. Right. And it's right, not to right, say right. you're buying their love and it's all about materialistic things. Mm -hmm. But people have said it a lot on the radio here with us is that whatever you had to do to get your husband or your wife, you may have to keep doing that in order to keep them. Right. And that's when we start to know sometimes that that fire goes out because one, we don't do the same things that we could, that we did do to get our spouse when we're trying to keep them. Mm. And the thing that I, I set up and think about, and you are so right, in order to get back to having fire in your marriage, mm -hmm. you first have to identify where did it go left? Yes. I guess we could say mm -hmm. like what happened. And the thing is a lot of people I feel don't want to identify where it went left because that may mean that I have to identify something within myself yep. that mm -hmm. I'm not ready to identify. And what I find, and it is so sad, especially at our age is there are so many individuals you find more comfort in blaming someone else. Mm -hmm for what is going on or not going on in your marriage, then taking personal responsibility. And so that could be blaming your, no, it's your fault because you don't do this. You don't do that. Okay. Listen, <laughs> I'm telling you, whether you married or not, people get tired of always hearing what you being told, what you don't do right. 
Where is the, the, the words of affirmation? Where is the positivity and things like that when it comes to a marriage? And so keep, keep that in mind. But we definitely have to identify where did it go left? A lot of the times, if we could be honest, you are dating. So it's kind of spicy and fiery there. Mm -hmm. You're dating. You get engaged. Oh, that's that's exciting. Mm -hmm. So then you're doing all the things to plan for this wedding. You're telling all the people, making all these plans. Congratulations. The honeymoon. That's another exciting phase. But what generally happens is after the honeymoon phase is kind of settled down mm -hmm. a little bit, I guess I could say, and you decide to start building a family. Mm -hmm. You build your family. That's exciting because you're having children, you're building, you're growing, you got namesakes. But somewhere in this phase is where it seems like after you've had the children and you're trying to support the children and you're trying to have your own career and you're trying to be helpful and faithful to, you know, going to the church building and sewing into others, getting your education. There's so many things that's going on my visual is like somebody that's juggling balls mm -hmm. and you could only keep going at that right for so long, but somewhere in there, it seems like that's where the fire kind of gets stomped out. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. And I believe it's because people become uh, complacent in their relationships. Okay. Um, people think that, well, if I've already watered the grass and I've already put the fertilizer down there for it to grow, then why do I have to keep doing it? Mm. It's because everything depletes or deplenishes over time. True. When it comes to your relationship, you got to keep feeding that thing. Mm -hmm. It is no different than a baby. You know, a baby starts out drinking milk, but yeah. eventually it's got to move to some solid food. Right. And, right, right. and it gets worse after that. That means your food bill is going to be going up. Your relationship is no different. When you first started out, there may have been little things that you needed to do that gave it the nourishment that needed. But as your relationship grows, it's going to require sometimes more of those quantities in order to sustain you or keep you filled in that relationship. Mm -hmm. So let me use it from an analogy perspective. Uh, when I grew up, uh, I was in uh, Boy Scouts. And whenever we went camping, one of the first things that we always had to do, we go in, we would take a look at the area that we thought we wanted to be suitable for our campsite. And everybody had small duties that they had to do. Somebody would start pitching tents mm -hmm. because you got to have shelter. If you ain't got no shelter, rain, get cold, too hot, you, you're done out there, right? Right. So somebody was doing that. Somebody was setting up a spot for uh, our first aid station in case somebody uh, got hurt. But then somebody was also right off the bat collecting wood and somebody else was starting to build a fire because mm. you had to have that fire because that was one of the most important things you can have because you got to cook with the fire. You got to be able to keep warm. Right. Some of the places we was at, that fire kept animals and things away. Mm. Now, how do I kind of compare that to what I was talking about uh, becoming complacent? See, a lot of times everybody was excited doing all that stuff in the beginning. Right. And once the fire was lit and we was out there in the campfire doing marshmallows and hot dogs, everything was fine. But then came that point where somebody had to be a fire guard mm -hmm. while other people were sleeping. Somebody had to be up to keep wood on the fire. That way, when you get up in the morning, you weren't cold. Mm -hmm. You wasn't out there trying to use flint and steel and start the fire all over again. You wanted to keep it going through the night. That's why I say people become complacent. Nobody wants to be the fire guard looking over their relationship. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to continue putting the, the wood on the fire on so that the fire stays lit. Right. Right. Now, right. How do we apply that to our relationships? See, a lot of times it's the wife that's the one that's putting all the wood on the fire. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the husband is the only one that's trying to put some wood on the fire. Mm -hmm. It's got to be both people being able to put something in there so that you guys have that warmth that it is that you're trying to get. Right. When I talked about a fire providing protection, a lot of places that I went, we had coyotes, wolves, bobcats, all kinds of stuff around us. If we were just out there in the dark, it's easy for an animal to come in. Mm -hmm. But when you've got that fire, that could be something that scares other animals off, mm -hmm. that protects you and your family because you're putting in what you need to, to protect what's important, which is your relationship. Right. right. Some of y'all might have missed that. So I'm going to say it one more time. You got to keep that spark going so that flame is there to ward other people off. Right. See, sometimes when people see that the, the, the spark is going down, the fire is going down, that's when they start trying to slide in to provide another spark. Right. Woo, come on. Another spark. Another spark. They wow. trying to get their own flame going. Mm -hmm. And what you will quickly be quick to find out, and, and my wife was kind of alluding to it before, sometimes people want to give up on the relationship when the fire when the uh, the, the fire isn't there. 
mm-hmm. when they think that it needs to be rekindled. Right. That's the time when you should be really be working together to get it started again. Right, right, right. Because right. it's easy to go over by somebody else's fire and get warm. For a temporary moment. Temporary <laughs> moment. Yeah. But but then when they kick you to the curb and say, hey, mm-hmm. this fire is all mine. You got to go get your own. What do you run back to? Mm-hmm. It's easy to go over and say, let me put some laws on your fire. You already got some laws over there. Why not build your own? Right, right, right. But mm-hmm. for I think for too many individuals, when they believe that the fire has gone out, they believe that there is nothing that they can do at that point. Right. And there is a lot that you can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, a fire goes out. The coals are still there. There's a good chance that it's still smoldering a little bit. And, and they, they've always said, wherever there's smoke, there's fire. Right. And so mm. we would stir the pile up a little bit, find out where those ambers were at, those hot pieces were at, and we would start putting small things back on there. And before you know it, the fire would go back up again. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife used to tell me all the time when we start a, a fire here in our fireplace at home, she would say, why are you down on your knees blowing on the fire? I'm giving oxygen to the fire mm. that there's smoke that's there that the source is there the heat is there but it needs a little breath a little uh blowing on it to make the flame go up so that it can catch on to everything else mm. sometimes we need somebody else to breathe into our relationships mm. we need people praying for us right uh, we right. need uh to see wisely counsel from individuals that yes. may have been married longer than we are right. or maybe somebody that's not married as long as we are but they got they got it right they got the fire going in their relationship mm. sometimes we need to have god himself breathe on us breathe. yes, and say, you guys need the rest. Take a step back. Let me pour back into you. Yes. And that's one of the biggest things where I think individuals lose that fire in their relationships because they don't take care of themselves. Mm. And that's Just why like we said in the last show. Yep. Yeah. Self-care is so important mm-hmm. for the individuals and the couple. Right. See, as an individual, you have to be able to love yourself first and take care of yourself first. Mm-hmm. And then you two come together and you're able to do more that way. I can't be taking care of myself and Shan not doing anything because guess what? I'm the healthy one. Now I'm the healthy one taking care of the sick one. Mm-hmm. But if we both work together to stay healthy, we're both helping each other out. Right. And right. so I believe self-care is one of those first things that you have to do to rekindle that fire is to enjoy yourself as you are so that you get to a place of wholeness or oneness within your heart and in your mind. And then you move that over with your spouse and you combine that when they're doing the same thing for themselves as well. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's the thing. One of the biggest things that I see in the last couple of years when it comes to keep that fire going in marriage is we just talked about you have to identify what in your marriage is fire because Mm, what is fire in your marriage may not be the same in somebody Mm -hmm. else's. So uh, oftentimes we do like the word of God tells us not to do, not to compare ourselves. And then the thing is what I find to be very comical. It's sad, but it's very comical is that for individuals who their fire is gone out in mm-hmm. their marriage. Their fire is not working in their marriage. Um, it's smoldering and stuff. They got small embers that they're not catching the light up like Kenya was just saying. Instead of you working on your own marriage, you got your mouth on somebody else's marriage. Mm-hmm. You got your mouth on what they got going on. You got your mouth on, oh, well, sister so-and-so, yeah, I seen the picture. Did you see what her and, and, and Brother King, Deacon King, Elder King, Minister, whatever title you want to give him, did you see where, where they went out? Mm-hmm. And did you see where she had on this skirt? It was about two inches above her knees. Girl, please, that could be. No, 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 no. You focusing on the wrong things. And these are at times, I feel the same exact people who you'll set up here and blame God that your marriage ain't working. Mm-hmm. Because if you had your, and see you, y'all used to us going in on the pastors, the church and all this other kind of stuff. No, this is equal opportunity. Kings always say that. You can't even blame the pastor and the first lady that mm-hmm. your marriage is, is sour right now. Because guess what? As we say in the country, closed mouths don't get fed. So why are you going to get mad at, at brother and sister so-and-so or elder and so-and-so or whatever the case may be, m- mad at your own brother and sister and your family because their marriage is working and yours is not? Mm-hmm. You, anybody, and this is what I'm learning, when you when you blame someone else, you might really want to consider yourself. Is it really them or is it really you? And so now what I'm seeing 
which irritates me in the 2023 is because you got people who their marriage didn't work. They sitting up here hating on other people's marriages who are. Mm -hmm. You kind of wishing a downfall on them. The same exact people. You get mad at God. Well, God, why did you allow this to happen? When mm -hmm. God has said, my, my son, my daughter, do this, go there. Y'all need to spend more time together. Yeah. Now, I'm going to talk about real quick because, you know, we, we try to be really transparent here on our show. We're coming up on 25 years of marriage. Glory be to God in December. Mm -hmm. But what I realized, and this is just Shan talking. I didn't even tell Kenya this before we came on tonight. But what I realized, I was sitting up trying to identify a time in our marriage where it don't seem like the fire was really giving fire. You see what I'm saying? Trying to identify. And what I, I came to, and we've had some time in our marriage just like this, mm -hmm. where the fire wasn't shining so bright. What I recognized and realized was this, is the fact that we were doing so many things that we were not focusing on our marriage mm -hmm. as we should have been. It was our careers. It was our education. It was our children. And that's what a lot of people do. Yes, we should be there because God has given the responsibility of our children to us as parents. So yes, we should be there. But the thing is, when we're doing all these other things, and I'm speaking to somebody on tonight, you're putting your marriage on the back burner. Mm -hmm. You're saying, well, God, I'm doing this, that, and the other. I'm down in the church. I'm uh, in the church building doing this. I'm at my kids' games doing that. I'm getting my education. I'm doing this. You're doing all these things. And you're saying, but God, you fix my marriage. You keep my marriage afloat. So what I realized with Kenya and I is when we really lined up with that illustration, and some of you all have seen that umbrella image illustration, God is the umbrella. God is the covering. God is the head. Mm -hmm. Then it's my husband. Then it's myself. So the umbrella, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, the umbrella, God's the head, then the husband, and then it's myself, and then it's our children, and then it's everything else. It's the career. It's the education, all mm -hmm. that. For me, Shan speaking, once my husband and I lined up as that diagram, that's when the full fire, I feel like, in our marriage has really been existing because we have a bad habit of putting other people before our spouse because we think our spouse is going to always be there. Uh -huh. So like Kenya was saying with the oxygen, now this is just me speaking once again. I believe spending time as a husband and wife is vital oxygen to your marriage. I believe dates are vital uh, date nights yeah. and date days and whatever are vital oxygen. Mm -hmm. I believe going on vacation and spending time together when Kenya and I get away, I don't care if it's just for three or four days. Oh my God. I don't know yeah. about you, baby, but I come back refreshed. Mm -hmm. I love him even the more. I'm his wife always, but I'm like, I, I feel like I'm his girlfriend. When we go out on dates, we're dressing up and we're doing the things that we used to do when we first start dating. A lot of husband and wives are not doing this. Just what you said, babe, mm -hmm. because you're complacent in your marriage and you're too busy wondering what everybody else is going to think and look. As long as God don't have an issue with what Kenya and I got going on, I could really care less what anybody else thinks. Yeah, absolutely. Because I made the vow to you, right? Mm -hmm. You made the vow to me. We made the vow before God. You know, the, the pastor was there, the clergy was there, mm -hmm. but that was a commitment, a vow that we took serious or, and we take serious in our marriage. How many of you all are actually still committing to the vows that you gave before God? Or are mm -hmm. you just complacent and existing in your marriage? Yeah, absolutely right. And, you know, I, I kind of want to add in to what my wife was saying, that whole thing about date night. Okay. Uh, we we practice that because we preach it religiously. Yes. And we want other individuals to be able to do that. And we've said it a number of times here on the show before. It's not about the money you spend on a date night. At you all. ain't got to spend no money at all. Mm -hmm. You can go somewhere and park in a park and just sit there and talk, watch right. the sunset, mm -hmm. uh, take a, a hike somewhere, uh, go to the mall and people watch. Just get a good <laughs> laugh. I'm telling you, it, it can be fun. Right. But 
my wife and I started that dating thing and we have other couples that we get with on a regular basis. And we always do what we say is out of the ordinary off the wall. Mm -hmm. We just took a trip to Las Vegas and we were probably the only nuts in Las Vegas walking around in full blown cowboy attire. <laughs> we shall hats, shirts, <laughs> boots, yep. tight jeans, the whole nine they yards. They said we was cute though. <laughs> because that's what we said we wanted to do because we were celebrating some individuals that we right. were with celebrating their birthdays. Right. So we do something out of the ordinary ordinary to break the monotony by yet still having fun with individuals that we're around. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back just for a minute to the title. Okay. We lost the fire in our marriage. Mm -hmm. Well, if you lost it, it's up to you to find it. Come on. Come on, sir. See, all too often we want everybody else to do all the work. Without telling them anything. Right. And so if you lose your keys and one of your, your friends come over, girl, I lost my keys. I don't know. Well, where were you at last? Come See, on. that's the type of help you need right Identify. there, but you can't expect them to look and find your keys when you can't give them a place where the last place you had them, where you thought you had them, or is there mm. certain places you keep your keys, mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. See, if you lost a fire, you have to be the key to get that fire started again. Mm. Other people can help, but you got to have a want to. You got to do some of the work. Right, right. You know, as counselors, my wife and I, we tell people really quick when they come to session, hey, this is what we're here for. We want to increase... Um, how your your standard of living that you're having over your life, mm -hmm. but it's going to take you doing some work. Yes, you have to do the work. You have to yeah. do the work. Yeah. And in putting that fire back in your relationship, you've got to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I said once again, I used to go camping all the time, part of Boy Scouts. Sometimes we would go places where other Boy Scouts were at. We would have our fires set up and rolling before other people had theirs done. You know what we would, we, we would do? We would share some of our fire. Mm. what does that look like? Okay. You have somebody that would get a shovel, come over and get some coals from you. Right. And they would go over and put them in their little pit. And then they would start stacking stuff on top of it. And then they were able to have their fire as well. Right. For those of you who haven't lost a fire in your marriage, help somebody else out. Mm. Take them out on a date night. Right. Because I'm telling you that does wonders for other people people's relationship. It does. I, I tend to believe that my wife and I have a very strong relationship. Mm -hmm. We happen to be out with another couple that's been married, I want to say 34, 35 years. Mm -hmm. And we were in a rarely, really upscale restaurant. And I told the waiter, do not give the other couple the check. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. Matter of fact, just come by here. I'm just going to slide you my card and just take care of the bill on me. Not that big of a deal. Right. Well, in a minute, I noticed that the waiter kept coming back and forth, but he never brought me my card back. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I, I know he didn't have time to run my card, but he's not even looking at me. It's almost like he's avoiding me for some reason. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden this lady comes up and she's walking towards us. And I'm thinking like, she's looking like she's going to ask for something, like she wants something. Right. And I'm like, if she needs some money or whatever, I said, I don't have to have that much cash on me, but if there's money she needs, I'll get some cash and just give it to her. Mm -hmm. She has her credit card, my credit she has card, our credit card. In, in, in her hand. And we don't even know her. Don't know if Madam <laughs> and for me, but she said that she saw us across the room. It was something about us and she wanted to bless us and pay our meal. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the thing that got me about that. We're out having a good time. We're we're solid in our relationship. Right. But she saw couples and yes. figured that we were together and did something good for us. And now we're able to go through and we're going to keep paying that thing forward because somebody did it for us. Right. Can right. we just help some other individuals get that fire back in their relationship? It's right. not being nosy. Is doing what God has called us to do is help individuals at all walks of their life. Mm -hmm. Whether if they need some help uh, financially, if they need a good word spoken to them, if those individuals just need to get some time away on their own. Right, right. Mm. But that's why we have to have individuals out giving assistance. That's mm -hmm. why you have to be willing to pour into yourself sometimes and pour into others. Because when God has blessed you at that tremendous level and your cup is running over, it's not for you to be all fat and getting gluttonous on it. It's so uh -huh. that somebody else can stick their cup in and gain a little something from you as well. That way they get replenished as well. Yeah. But I believe that dating thing is one of the biggest keys. Now, these other two things, I kind of want to take them in together. Okay. Number one, in order to get your fire started back, both individuals need to communicate their needs. Right. A lot of time the fire goes out because people quit talking to one another. Mm -hmm. You don't tell a person that you need to hear a nice word. You don't tell your spouse, well, I would like for you to dress up for me. Or honey, do you remember when you used to let me wear your shirt or used to dress this way for me? 
that's part of it. You got to communicate what it is that you want in a relationship because if you don't, that other person is not supposed to be a mind reader. Right. Now, right. on the flip side of that, you have to understand this. If your spouse is telling you what it is that they desire, listen to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Don't take it as like someone is attacking you. That person is literally telling you what it is that they desire about you as a human being. Mm -hmm. So if your spouse comes up to you and says, well, baby, I really used to love it when you used to open the door for me. Don't jump back up and say, well, you ain't opening no, no doors for me. Right. No, that was something that you used to do that that person enjoyed. And if the love is there, you'd be willing to do that again. Right. And you have the, the um, you have the right as well to come back and say, well, baby, you remember we used to make breakfast on Saturday mornings and we used to eat breakfast in bed? Communicate that. Mm -hmm. Maybe that sparks it back up. Now both people are accountable for things that they used to do that they don't do anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm all That's with it. my wife on this thing called accountability. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. people do not like to be held accountable. So this is one thing I wholeheartedly believe in. And my wife would tell you, if, if you're not willing to do something, then don't start it. Mm, if you're not willing to keep it if going. If you're not really keep it going, don't start okay, it. Okay. So she she will tell you, we walk down the street, I will jerk her from one side to the other because I'm the <laughs> one that should be walking on the side where the traffic is at. Mm -hmm. When I see something that I deem unsafe ahead of us, I will tell her, baby, move to my right side. Get behind me. Baby, don't get scared, but this is coming up. Right. Because that is what I do because I'm a protector for her, and I'm always going to do that regardless of the fact. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't going to do it, I was never going to start it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, that's where the fire really starts to get out in people's relationships. You do something to try to hook somebody, mm -hmm. to try to catch somebody, mm -hmm. and then once you got them, you don't want to do it anymore. That's not going to keep them there. Right. I know right, a whole right. bunch of people that fish. Every once in a while, you got to put some more bait back on that hook to keep catching the fish. Mm. They don't bite bare hooks. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Just saying. Look, a real fisherman would catch that. Yeah. <laughs> they don't bite bare hooks. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That is so amazing. But but the thing, too, like you were saying, you know, we were talking about earlier, we definitely have to identify what the problem is. Mm -hmm. We definitely need to understand that what goes on in your marriage, that's for you. Well, my husband liking a wife, I shouldn't be worried about what another husband liking his wife. Mm -hmm. Let's catch that. Yeah. What Kenya the King like in his wife Chantrell, I shouldn't be worried about what another husband like in his wife or for his wife to do and not to do because I'm not married to him. I'm married to him. And that's why I think we get caught up a lot of the times because again, it goes back to that thing of comparison. Mm -hmm. So like Kenya was saying, we have done it. For those of you who have been married for some time, you all's marriages, I love spending time with my husband. Um, like I admitted, you know, we have had some dry valley moments in our marriage. That's what I'm saying. We had some dry bones in our marriage. But the thing was in the praying and God dropping stuff in our spirit and saying, this is what you need to do. We had to learn to focus because Kenya and I are both overachievers. Anybody who knows us per personally, we love people. We love to help people, but there were moments in our marriage where we were helping people at the detriment of our own marriage. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's get that one more time. I took it too fast for somebody. We were helping people at the detriment of our own marriage. So as we were speaking about in the last show, self-care mm -hmm. and running on E, me, he and I both, our marriage is running on E, but we're steady trying to pour and do. And so I want to talk to the saints real quick. That's out of order. That's out of order. That's out of God's order. I should never tell my husband, well, I got to go do and that, 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 that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm getting mad at him when our stuff is running on E. We need to ensure, let's go back to the last show we did, self-care. And and that sister lady, she, what she has shared, you know, we know that um, the word of God says for our cup overflows, it runs over. Mm -hmm. So if our marriage is running on empty, why are we out there trying to save everybody else? Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, just say ouch for somebody who who that is. Don't get mad at Kenya and Shan. But if our marriage is running on empty, we should ensure that we are allowing God to continue mm -hmm. to pour in the cup of our marriage. Thinking about visualizing how you all were in the courthouse or down at the altar when you got married. How is God, how are you as husband and wife allowing God to pour into your marriage? That's probably why that fire went out. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? We, let's take some personal accountability. We give the fire extinguisher to the devil to extinguish our marriage. Mm -hmm. And don't nobody want to hear that. Then we turn around and we blame everybody else. We blame our spouse. We blame our families. We blame everybody else and not take it. Who handed the devil the fire extinguisher? Yep. 
Who gave the devil the fire extinguisher? Okay, so we need to cut it out if we really desire to get back to a marriage that's prospering. Mm -hmm. Self-care, like Kenya was saying earlier, that is so important. I'm learning that. And then having a conversation with my husband and say, what do you desire in a wife? And him asking me, what do you desire in a husband? We really need to get back to that. We are not doing as we call it in the military, an AAR, an after action review. It's mm -hmm. probably not even called that anymore. But we're not doing that. We're not checking in with each other to see how to keep this fire going. Mm -hmm. No, we get frustrated. We get angry. And a lot of times because we don't practice good self-care and we don't know who we are as individuals, we can't effectively communicate to our husband and wives what we desire in a husband or a wife. And then I'm going to say this, and I know Kenya got, you know, his notes as well. We do not allow our husband and or wives to mature. We oftentimes will stay immature because there is no growth within us. So I may not have no, I'm still got the same um, childish, I'm going to say 20 year old mentality. I was 20 when I first married Kenya. Um, and Kenya may be maturing in his life. He's trying to become a better version of him. He's working on good self-care and everything like that. But I'm still sitting up here in my mind. I'm a whole 45, but I'm acting like a 20 year old. We should allow as husband and wives, our spouses to mature into who God has created for them to be and love them for who they are. Because oftentimes the spark goes out and we don't have to fire in the marriage. Is because we are both not maturing together. We're too busy trying to control. You should act like this. Why are mm -hmm. you not acting like that? God don't even control us like that. Come on, somebody. God gives us free will as his children. But why do we act like that we have ultimate supreme control over our husband and wife? We shouldn't want to control our husband and mm -hmm. wife, in my opinion. Right. I mean, what you think? No, you're, you're right. And I think uh, that's the reason for a lot of the fires that go out in relationships is because the other person is smothering the other person out. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. See, everything is always about that one individual and mm. it's never about the couple as a whole. Mm, okay. And, and, and okay. I'll give you good examples. And I, I'm not trying to beat up women. I'm just, this is an example that I've seen lately. Okay. Uh, looking at a lot of stuff on the internet, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll get uh, a female that says, well, you know, in order for me to be happy, this is what a man has to bring for me but they're not bringing anything to the table. Mm. So I got to build the fire and keep you warm. And you go sit by the fire all day. And the only time you go call me is when the fire is getting ready to go out. Wow. Shouldn't be that way. It should say, selfish. Right. It's selfish. Two individuals working together. That's why the two have to become one. Wow. That's yes. what my wife was saying. You have to allow individuals to mature in certain areas. And the problem is that sometimes a person is only thinking about them. They're not thinking about the couple as a whole. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing that we really need to dive into a lot is we have to go to that point where we're talking about intimacy. Okay. Both uh, physical and verbal. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we forgot that when we was dating, we used to whisper some things in our, our boyfriend and our girlfriend's ear. Okay. Do a little something that may turn them on or something or make them feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. And then with that, um, you have to understand that you used to do that then. You should probably keep doing it now. Right. But we lose that and just think that that person is supposed to be okay with it. Well, I'm just going to stop doing that, but I still want them to do this for me. Mm. See, it's that selfish role again. That's true. So we got to make sure that we're keeping that intimacy level up. The same thing goes when it comes to intimacy, when it comes to the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand when, uh, and I'm I, this is an adult show, mm -hmm. I understand when you were younger, it, it might have been all night long. Mm -hmm. Now you're older, it may not be, mm -hmm. but you can still enjoy one another. Right. And why does it have to seem like it's a chore for some individual when it comes down to intimacy in the bedroom? Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be something that you both enjoy. That's why that communication, talking about your needs, your desires and things like that really come out and you try to meet each other's needs. Right. But all too often, it's just about, well, as long as I'm getting what I want, I'm all right with it. Right. It's right. okay. Mm. But it wasn't that way in the beginning. Mm. I believe if individuals stayed in their marriage, mm -hmm. the way that they came into it, mm. a lot of things would be a whole lot better and fires wouldn't be going out. Right. Because when you're trying to get that individual, th there's something about the hunt. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. There's something about wanting to talk to this individual and get to know them and let them know how I am and what I can do. I can be that provider, protector, and all that stuff. And then once you say I do, it's like, oh, well, I got them now. I ain't got to worry about doing all that right, anymore. Right, right. And they probably seen somebody in their life that did the exact the same exact thing. The exact same that's thing. Why they doing it. Precisely. Wow. But we have to keep doing those things because mm-hmm. love doesn't have any limits on it. Right. I'm going to say that again. Love doesn't have any limits on there. Mm. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't say, you know what? Uh, well, I wanted to give my son to you in the beginning for this, right, and there. But I'm going to do it for this group of people, but I ain't going to do it for that group of people. Right, right. I'm going to do it this time because I just need you to get and convert and say you're a Christian. Once you're a Christian, I'm going to drop you Woo! off. It don't work like that. Wow. So wow. why do we do that in our relationships? So we're on. supposed to be modeling love and being Christ-like. Mm, mm-hmm. Just saying, food for thought. Mm-hmm. That right there is deep. But then again, it goes back to Galatians 6. That which you sow, you shall reap. Mm -hmm. And you said it earlier. I hate to say it like this, but the reason why there may not be fire in the marriage like it used to be is because it's a lopsided marriage. And so you have to ask yourself, this is what I was thinking. Why did I get married? Why did I marry my husband? Why will my husband propose to me? Did I say yes? And so a lot of people, let me just run it down. Your marriage wasn't built on a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. And and, and until we can recognize that and honestly recognize some people got marriage out of a situationship. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody got pregnant or you got somebody pregnant. So you got married. Some people got married because um, you felt, let's say I felt that, oh, shoot, Kenya, he's a leader in the in the army. I don't know how many women that I've heard this and it's so selfish. Oh, uh -uh, I'm about to marry him because he's about to take care of me for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. What? But women, let's be honest. It's been said. Some people get married because you was pressured in to get married. Yeah. Depending on who your your mother and your father was, they them they they near punked this young man and said, "You're gonna marry my Shot daughter." Them with exactly. Me. Mm-hmm. That still kind of goes on to this day. So, what was your marriage built on? Was it actually built on the foundation of God? You know what I'm saying? Why did I marry my husband? I married my husband because my husband have a good heart, mm-hmm. and he still have a good heart to this day. And I married my husband because I've been praying and God confirmed that this is your husband. Oftentimes we don't wait on that. We have a lot of men that I've heard. The reason why I married my wife is because I didn't want nobody else to have her. Ooh. It ain't like I really loved mm-hmm. her like that, but it's just, I can't imagine seeing her with anybody else. A lot of these examples that we have given is selfish, 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 and more selfish. Mm -hmm. Okay. God is not anywhere in being selfish. Just like Kenya was saying, God don't play with us like that and play games with us. So why do we do that? So if you're not willing to be mature enough to identify the issue and say, you know what? This could be me. A lot of individuals, the reason why that fire went out, that fire symbolized hope for you Mm -hmm. when you first got married. Maybe you grew up in dysfunction. Function. Yeah. Maybe you grew up, you know, dysfunction, single parent home, and you've always wanted a marriage. You've seen the the TV shows we used to watch back in the day. And you're like, you know, I could do this thing. But sometimes we get into the marriage and we realize it's a lot harder than what we think it is. Because mm-hmm. as the word of God says, you're no longer two but one flesh. You're bringing together two different backgrounds you're bringing together two different personalities Mm -hmm. you're bringing together he has ideas for life i have ideas and then on top of that we're trying to raise a family as well that's a good one and we don't have no oxygen because i don't want to go out on a date with Mm -hmm. you but what was what was having y'all dating in the beginning what was it and like i said i had to tell on me my husband would tell all the time Baby, ooh, can you wear this? Baby, can you wear that? And I was too busy worried about what the people in the church building would say instead of my husband. And he even told me one time, baby, I'm not trying to have you out here dressed inappropriately. We have sons and I know how you are and you respect yourselves as their mother. But as your husband, 
This is what he was asking me. But again, here, well, well, and here we are sitting up arguing and fussing and fighting because I'm too busy worried about what the people at the church building. It seemed like their marriage was quote unquote air mm -hmm. quotes for those of you all who are not watching. It seemed like their marriage was perfect in the church. But then you find out years down the line that their marriage was suffering like yours was. Mm -hmm. No marriage is perfect. What I'm saying is work on your Jerusalem. Yeah. Work on lining up with the way that God desires for marriage to be. Work on getting in that word, not trying to be like every wife in the Bible. You can't, baby, don't be out here trying to be like Bathsheba. Get in there and learn. You know what I'm saying? Bathsheba was married to her husband, but she ended up with King David. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. I don't want to end up in a trap like that. Again, I say that's when you give that fire extinguisher to the devil to the enemy, the adversary, and he, you helping him extinguish your marriage. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think another thing that we fail to realize something, uh, sometimes this thing that we call merged identity. Okay. And when you talk about merged identity, what you're going is you're going from a sense of two people becoming one, mm. which is what the book says we should do. Right, right. But at the same time, we still have to keep our own separate identities. So okay. when I say merged identity, it becomes from the fact like, well, I like hunting. Mm -hmm. you got to like hunting too. Mm -hmm. So it ain't just about me. Now we got to be doing it, but that ain't something that she may particularly like, mm -hmm. but we try to force that over on our spouse. Now that's not say that we can't share hobbies and I want to introduce you to something to see if you like it, but all too often in a lot of relationships, let's say I'm a businessman. Okay. She likes to dress up at times, but every time we go out, it's in a business activity and she got to dress a certain way because it's really about me, but mm -hmm. I'm making it weak. That's a merged mm, identity. Mm. So you got to do everything to make me look a certain way, make me feel a certain way. Everything wow. has to be about my hobbies, my interests and everything. And then you wonder why the fire goes out mm. because you burning hot and they, that gum sitting out here freezing cold. Right. Because My the goodness. two aren't compatible anymore. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to share those things, respect specific boundaries, and then move on from there. Right. The other thing that I will tell you is this. Everybody got to have a stop pile. Okay. You got to store up some stuff. Mm -hmm. See, there's nothing worse than have a fire going and realize, oh my God, it's almost out. Then when you run outside to the wood pile, there's no wood there. Wow. You always got to stick something back up for yourself. Mm -hmm. You always got to lay something back. For Shannon and I, sometimes it's just date night. Mm -hmm. For sometimes it's for us, it's just getting away and going somewhere for a weekend or going on a cruise or flying somewhere, meeting up with other friends. You got to store some things up for yourself. Right. It's going to keep that fire lit right right but all right. too often what we want to do in a lot of relationships nowadays is that it's all about me i don't care about my wife i'm going out hanging with the fellas we got a boys trip plan and then we got a, a boys day out then we got a boys shopping trip and it's always guys boys guys boys but it ain't never about the relationship mm. and then when you come back and realize that your fire is out and you can't get it started again then you have to ask yourself that question who's to blame mm. and that yeah. once again that's where that accountability kicks in then the last thing that I would say is this. My wife was kind of hidden on it. Sometimes it's about helping that other individual. It's good for yourself, but watch this. It's good for that other individual for you to help them build confidence. Mm -hmm. See, my wife okay. didn't understand it then when I would say, hey, put this dress on, put this skirt on, wear this, that, and other. She was having an identity issue because mm -hmm. she had a couple of our children. Mm -hmm. She was always saying, well, my body ain't like it used to be. Well, I know that, mm -hmm. uh, and I have to take uh, accountability for that. You didn't have the baby by yourself. Right. And right. so however your body is at at this point, I'm telling you, I still love you and I still want to see you dressed a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving her that confidence from a physical aspect and also a mental aspect to build up her confidence to let her know, I love you regardless of the fact. Right. If right. you don't have four or five children, am I expecting your body to be the same as when you was 20? No. Right. But guess what? I also have to look at that and tell her I ain't 20 years old no more either. Right, it goes right. both ways mm -hmm. and we respect each other on that part. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to look at the bigger picture, build that person up, can help light that fire again. If, if your wife, people used to always say, you just let yourself go. Mm -hmm. Why they let themselves go? 
Mm. For some people, it's because they're not confident in themselves. Right. Sometimes it's because the spouse ain't got no confidence in them. Mm. When was the last mm-hmm. time you told them they look good in a certain thing? When was the last time you asked them to potentially dress up? When right. was the last time you got Google eyes that girl, well, hey, you mess around, put that dress on, it's going to be some trouble tonight. Right, I'm right, saying, right. Yeah. Adult show, we're going to keep it real. Right, right. When we don't do that, they lose interest in this. And they say, well, why should I do it if he's not going to say anything anyway? Mm. So you can't wait till they put the dress on to give them the compliments. You got to give them the compliments. Come on, sir, ahead of time. Teach the I'm just gonna leave it at Come that. Come on. And you know what? When I find that um just kind of thinking about it as we're talking about tonight's show, that people's marriage where they recognize it's smoldering is when the kids are all out the mm-hmm. house. Because you didn't take trips before. Because Kenya and I, we still have children in the house. And they know. Everybody know. Friday nights is date nights for the kings. Date day something. Whatever the case may be. Our children know that. Y'all going on date night tonight? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Oh, y'all going away? We let our children know, hey, we're going to go away for the weekend, whatever. Because we are setting the example. We're not going to wait. Because, listen, for somebody who just got married, somebody who just now started their family, you cannot wait, or let me say it is not wise <laughs> to wait until 18 plus years for your children to grow up and get out the house before you come back to who you you are as a husband and a mm-hmm. wife team. Baby, like he said, we went to Vegas. That was our last trip. Very interesting. Um, but we enjoyed each other. We had fun. We were holding hands, walking down the strip. We were, you know what I'm saying? He opened up the door. All the things that he used to do when we were dating. And I was trying to do the same exact thing. That's how you keep it going. So please do not wait until your child go out the house and then y'all looking at each other like strangers. And then that's when all of a sudden y'all trying to jump start something. Mm-hmm. No, y'all better have it being jump started right now and continuously going. So we brought this topic up tonight, but guess what? God can change. We can change. Mm-hmm. We have to have a want to in our spirit to have that fire kindling in our marriage. And please, for the love of God, because people are doing this, you're separating yourself from the very people that you've been praying that God surround you when it comes to your marriage. You don't want to open up and share. Just mm-hmm. like people used to tell us, why are y'all telling y'all's business? Me and Kenyon went through what we went through. God has brought us through so we could be a blessing and help others. But everybody is, is so many people that's out there lying to themselves saying, oh, it's all good. I'm okay. No, you are not. Your marriage is suffering. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of people are not shocked when it's like, what? They're not together anymore? Why? Because you used to faking it for so long, you can't fake it no more. Right. We can't continue to fake it in our marriage and call it God. Let that settle in your spirit. That's, that's good. <laughs> and, you know, I, I believe sometimes we need to treat our marriages like computers. Mm. Sometimes we need to do a factory reset. Okay. We need to go back to that which it was in its natural state. Right. See, A lot of times what we do nowadays, we get a computer, we work with it for a long period of time, and then it says, oh, you need to update. Mm -hmm. And then you get the update and you keep updating, and then pretty soon the computer's just kind of gone. And we just want to toss it aside because it's not acting like it used to. But sometimes you can go back and do an update, a factory update, and take it back to its original settings. Can we take a look at our relationships and say, you know what? I might need a factory reset. Mm. I might need to go back to what we started off at. And it started because you looked in my eyes and we held hands. Mm, we walked down on. the street and went, we didn't care about nobody else and what they was thinking. It was just about us and we enjoy one another. Right. That may be the thing that gets that fire started in your relationship again. Mm-hmm. You may have to realize that we can't be around everybody right now. You may have to take some time out just for the two of you. That's true. If you're around somebody every other weekend or every other day, sometimes you need to break away from that so you can focus on yourself. Mm-hmm. Like we said in the last show with, with uh, self-care, Jesus did it. He's Come with on. the disciples all the time. But he said, you know what? Hold up, y'all. Y'all stay over here. I need to go here and spend some time with my father and pray. Mm-hmm. I need to do this, that, and other. I need to rest. Sometimes you have to get away from other individuals right. and then always being so, so careful of that extinguisher, mm-hmm. anything that can extinguish your fire. You want to potentially, you want to try to stay away from it. Right, 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 right. Because I, I think what most people fail to realize when it comes to an extinguisher, sometimes the extinguisher can do so much damage to where the fire can't come back. Mm-hmm. Understand that? See, sometimes you can squirt a little uh, carbon um, monoxide, carbon um, dioxide, the white powder, and the fire extinguisher on the fire, 
and you just gave it a little squirt, but the fire can still burn. Mm -hmm. You didn't completely take away the oxygen. You didn't completely take away the heat. Right. Some of us have to realize that in our relationship, the heat, the oxygen, the fuel source is not completely gone. We just got to add a little bit more of some substance to it in order to get the fire burning again. Mm. Now, we're a realistic show. Come on. I'm just going to call it out. Okay. Some of y'all don't want that fire relit. Mm. Some of y'all are good being where you're at. You don't want to pour into your spouse. You don't want them to have their own mind. You do want to kind of control them. You like being complacent because your mind is all somewhere else, probably trying to start a spark or a fire somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't want to relight it in your own home. Mm -hmm. But we've got to be able to let that go. Right. When God said he wanted the two to become one, he wants the two to become one. Can y'all work together to be the helpmates that he's called you to be? Mm -hmm. Just like when we go back to Genesis, we talk about it all the time. Adam was by himself. God said, it's not good for a man to be alone. Right. Gave him a help meet. God has given you that help meet. Now, can you guys help each other meet in the middle to where that fire is always burning? Mm -hmm. We're not saying it's got to be a roaring furnace all the time. Right. Sometimes you go have some roaring furnaces. Sometimes you just have a nice little candlelight uh, that's going. Right. Sometimes you may have some ambers there that you need to throw some dry grass on or some dry wood to get it going. But don't let the fire go out. Right. That is the key. Right. Do whatever you can to keep from fire, the fire from going out. Because once that fire goes out, a lot of people tell you it's hard to get it started again. That's true. And then even if you get started again, it may not be how it used to be yeah. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so my thing is, you know, is we're preparing because, man, this time is going by quick. To close out for the show is I want to ask husband and wives that are listening. What do you do to sow into your husband and or wife? Mm -hmm. What do you do to pour into them? What do you say? You know what I'm saying? What, what do you do? You, you have to have an action because a lot, a lot of times we get upset and say, well, your mouth say one thing, but the actions are not following. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? Well, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. You know, I've been in a lopsided marriage and we know that to be true, where one is always doing, pouring, speaking life, and the other one is always taking. Mm -hmm. And like we said a few years back, you know, you tend to get mad, but you knew the person was selfish before you married him. Yep. You know, can things change? Yes, it can. But the thing is, what are you pulling and sowing into your marriage in order for that fire to stay strong and grow? I love speaking life into my husband. He speaks a life into me. And it's ironic how we, especially as the brothers and sisters, are for our, this is for our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's ironic how we can go out and speak life into everybody else, but won't even do it for our own spouse. Mm -hmm. The one that we say that we love. Yep. The one that we say that God blessed us with. But we so busy out here trying to save everything and everybody else that you won't recognize the work that needs to be done in your own marriage. That's good. And so in, in talking in these last few minutes about losing the fire in your marriage, if you feel as though you've lost that fire, I would consider uh, you taking time out mm -hmm. and talk to God. Right. And ask him, what is it that he believes you need to do to start that fire back up mm -hmm. again? Mm -hmm. Not only that, talk to your spouse. Right. This ain't time to be saying, yeah, I was right. You was wrong and all that stuff. Pointing fingers. Baby, what is it that I need to do to light your fire again? Yes. What is Ooh. it that I'm, I'm missing out on? What am I not hmm. saying? What am I not doing? And sometimes what we'll do is we want to get feedback for everybody else on every other thing we're doing, but we're not going to get it from our spouse. That's going to tell us what it is that they really need. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing I would say is if you notice that there's some things in your relationship, take a time. Take time, sit down, take a piece of paper. Right. Everything that you say is not happening. You've got the list right there to make it start happening. Mm -hmm. See, if you know you're not spending time with one another, start spending time. That's putting a little bit more fire back into your relationship. Then the last thing effort. that I want to tell you, because we only got about two or three minutes left, is this. Uh, you can't burn everything. See, mm -hmm. when it comes to your fire being lit, you got to be careful what you put on there. You can use gas to start a fire, but if you use too much, the fire may get out of control. Wow. You got to be careful as to what you're putting on your fire. Mm -hmm. See, when you build a fire out on a campground, you got to get dry wood, stuff that's already dried out because it's going to burn cleaner. It's going to actually produce heat. Mm -hmm. When you put wood on there that's green, that's not seasoned yet, only thing it does is smoke and it, hardly, it never catches up. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people in their relationships, that's what they're putting into their relationship is stuff that's going to either burn too quick and cause a big, massive fire or it's not going to burn at all. Mm -hmm. Only thing it is is just smoking. 
Right, right, right. Oh my gosh. We hope that you all enjoyed our show um, here in Marriage Minders with the Kings. Mr. King is going to close us out with a thought of the week. All right. And our thought of the week comes from Elder Dallin H. Oaks. And it reads, if our bodies are sick, we seek to heal them. We do not give up. The mm-hmm. same thing should be true of our marriages. And once again, that comes from Elder Dallin H. Hoax. Wow. So mm-hmm. Marriage Mondays with the Kings is brought to you by our sponsor, Christian Human forward slash inspiration. We ask that you go to Facebook. If you have a Facebook, search them because if you need inspiration throughout the week, that is your page. Um, if you desire as an organization or a business to be promoted during our broadcast or on KRG and 98.5 FM, please uh, call them at 254-213-1588. Any way that you need to contact us, ask any questions, we ask that you go to our website if you have any topics you want to be discussed, marriagemondayswiththekings.com. So we want to thank you so much for joining us. We ask that you join us back next week, Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And as always, keep it locked right here on KRGN 98.5 FM, The The Rock. Rock.